Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today I want to show you how to clean your Yoder Smoker's pellet grill. This is a question that we get a lot here at All Things Barbecue. How do I clean my grill properly? So we're just going to walk you through some very basic steps on how to keep this thing clean or how to clean it up after you've really put it to work. Now the grill that we're working with today is the Yoder Smokers YS640 pellet grill. I put about a week of hard cooking on this thing without doing much cleanup. So I'm going to show you how it starts dirty and how we get it clean. All right, before we get started, it's a good idea to have some nitrile gloves on hand. Just makes cleanup easy and you're not scrubbing your hands forever later. These are some nice sturdy ones that won't break super easy while you're cleaning. So essentially we're going to take this thing apart from the top to bottom, which means we're going to start cleaning from the top to bottom. And the first thing I'm going to do is just hit the top shelf with a wire brush. Now this grate's not particularly dirty, which is nice. But it's a good idea to have a good quality wire brush like this one. This is my personal favorite. It's the Weber three-sided grill brush. The other thing we can do is flip this over and get the bottom side as well. Just make sure you support it with one hand. Now the other thing you can do if you really want to do a deep clean on this and cut through some of the grease is to use a cleaner. Safe CID is a spray cleaner that's non-hazardous and 100% biodegradable. And you can actually use this to cut down on some of the grease. I'm gonna set this aside so we can continue cleaning. Next we have the main cooking grate. We've got our regular grates on the right and our grill grates on the left. Again, with the triangle brush, we're just gonna knock off any of the uh, stuff that's stuck to the grates here. This is easier to do when the grill's hot, so I recommend doing this right after you cook rather than waiting until next time. And these you can always flip over to get the bottom side as well. And then for the more detailed spots where you need to really get in there, I've got this smaller brush also from Weber in the same style as the other one. And this one you'll see just in a minute is actually really great for the Grill Grates product. Now moving on to the Grill Grates. As you can see, I've made a pretty good mess on these. I'm gonna start with the same brush on top. I'm not going to go too hard, I don't want to scrape off the coating. And then to get down in these grooves, I like this smaller brush. And this brush has a little nub on the edge, which is actually perfect for getting in this one groove that's really hard to get to. So we'll turn these out and dump them and show you just how much stuff we got off of here. Now when I do a deep clean on the grill grates, what I like to do is put them in a tub or a large sink with warm water and some dish soap and just let them soak for like an hour and then you can get at them with a brush or with a scouring pad. All right, now we've come to the diffuser. So I'm gonna start by scraping this off uh, using a putty knife or a paint scraper like this, good idea. And then we're just gonna continue to scrape off anything stuck to the surface of the diffuser. When cleaning the diffuser, you'll wanna make sure to scrape this area where the door sits to make sure you get a nice tight fit on the door. Now we can remove this. Brush it off, got a clean diffuser. So now I'm gonna lift this burn grate out of here. You wanna knock out any ash or this debris that's fallen from the diffuser. And then just check to make sure there's no carbon buildup on any of those holes. If there is, like, 
and maybe a little right here, just scrape that off. I'm also just going to brush off this debris and ash here. Check on your seal right there. Make sure that it's intact. And then we're just going to work our way around the grill. Anywhere there's some excess stuff. This is back here from where we cleaned off the grates. Knock that down. And we'll do the same thing with the rail on the front here. And I always take a look at the lid because a lot of times you get a little bit of creosote that's built up right here. It's just a little bit flaky. So you can knock that loose so it doesn't end up falling into your food. And then I'll just work up anything that's stuck to the bottom. Knock that loose so we can vacuum it up. All right, let's go grab the shop vac. And once you've got everything knocked down to the bottom, you're ready to vacuum it out. And vacuuming it really is the best way to clean the inside. I've worked with a scoop and tried to scoop stuff out. You just can't ever quite get everything out of there. So I definitely recommend using a vacuum. I'm gonna start by vacuuming out the center. You definitely wanna get underneath the burn grate. And then also those grease traps, there's two rails that run down to where your bucket hangs. Make sure to vacuum that area as well. So that's it, this is really simple. You can start putting this thing back together now that everything's knocked down and vacuumed out. All right, we've got the inside cleaned up nicely. Now let's get to work on the outside. So a few things you'll wanna have on hand for this, your grill cleaner, some soapy warm water, and a couple of microfiber towels. I'm just gonna start by wiping off some of this dust and dirt from the outside so that we're not fighting that once we get this wet. And we'll go a little deeper on the clean here in just a minute. Now we'll hit it with some of our grill cleaner. And using your clean rag now, you want to wipe that. So we'll kind of work this around and then as it starts to dry, you can buff it to get a nice finish. And you can see how in some of the trouble spots where you've got some food or sauce or something on there, the degreasing quality and the safe CID really helps to break that down. The initial application cleans everything up and breaks stuff down, but it's kind of streaky. So this is where you'll want to take a dry side of your microfiber and just buff out the streaks. Now before we clean the lower half of the body here, we're going to clean up these shelves a little bit so we can take them off and access the lower half of the cooker. Just a little bit of warm so soapy water. It's all you need to really break down any stuff on the surface of the wire shelves. All right, so that takes care of any of the hard stuck on stuff. And from here, we can just take this off and rinse it off either with the hose or in your sink. Now, cosmetically, this already looks night and day way better. But if you want to get into a deeper clean, typically your trouble spot's going to be right here in the front where you get the grease dripping down from inside. And I want to show you how to clean that up. All right, so we'll start by popping this lid open again with the soapy warm water. And you want a scouring pad that's not too abrasive, but can actually break down this stuff on the surface.
At this point, that grill is clean, but cosmetically, you can see some imperfections. Now, over time, the grease and wiping that off and whatnot is going to erode the paint. And what you can do is actually touch that paint up, and I'll show you how in just a minute. Now, using some fine grit sandpaper, you're just gonna work these deeper pits to smooth them out gently. We're really not gonna go too crazy on this. We want to even out the surface. So just a nice smooth transition and then we'll move on to any other trouble spots. And then what we're going to do is just go across the entire surface here lightly. It's going to help even the entire surface out. And now this paint's got something to grab onto over the entire surface. Wipe down the sanded surface with a mineral spear or denatured alcohol. I like to use Simple Green just to make sure that everything's clean before we put the paint on. See a lot of dust is, uh, paint dust is collected there. You want to get it clean. For the paint itself, you want to use a satin black stove paint. Yoder provides a little can of that when you buy your grill, or you can go over to atbbq.com and purchase one there. Now holding the can about eight inches away, you're gonna work in long sweeping motions to cover the surface. You wanna make sure you don't apply so much paint that it's going to drip, but you do wanna cover the surface completely. So it's really as simple as that. You know, we all want our grills to stay looking very nice and clean. And with these yoders, it really just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, and it's not hard to achieve. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to head over to atbbq.com and get in contact with our team. All Things Barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.